You're listening to Chrysalis Colored, the podcast. Hello, this is Jorun from Norway and Christine in Canada with a podcast about color analysis and how it applies to you in a practical way. We'll talk about how to use your colors to make your days brighter, your wardrobe more enjoyable, and your life easier. We'll talk about topics that we find interesting, and we encourage you to submit your questions. A podcast listing is available at chrysaliscolor.com under the podcasts tab. Welcome to episode 29. Today is a special show because we're talking about such an important topic and we're very honored to have a guest with us, Lithuanian photographer Victoria Gedrimiena. Did I get that right, Victoria? Yes, that's perfect. <laughs> I have practiced. Anyway, so Victoria is currently living in Bergen, Norway, kind of in my neck of the woods. And she specializes in nature photography, but also portraits and boudoir photography, which is something very new to me. And we have links to Victoria's work in the show notes, so you can check that out. So Victoria, as I said, she's a photographer. And how I know her is that she was hired in a group for our area as a tourist location, which is how I met her because I was their tour guide. So we were chatting at lunch and another woman said that Victoria does boudoir photography as part of her photography business. And that got my attention. I've never met anyone who does boudoir photography before. And so Victoria mentioned that she had struggled with body issues, which also got my attention because it is my experience that most women struggle with this, whatever they look like. And another woman around the lunch table said how wonderful she felt when being photographed by Victoria. Not boudoir photos. In this case, it was like photos in the spectacular mountain landscape that she was hired to do. And then the conversation went on to how body image issues seem to have nothing to do with how we look and everything to do with how we feel. And I noticed how good Victoria is at helping people feel so comfortable. And yet she confessed that she also struggles with the same body image issues as the rest of us. And this is an important topic. So we decided, Christine and I, to invite her to our podcast and explore this topic together. Welcome, Victoria. Thank you. I'm very happy and honored to be here. And I'm very glad that we can elaborate on this topic a bit more. It's interesting because I recently posted a couple of videos on YouTube reacting as a color analyst to women going from dye to silver hair. This one was about blondes going brunette. And we'll put the link in the show notes, of course. And you know, many of the comments, they're not about hair color. They're about struggles women have with self-image and self-acceptance. And um, I, I also notice a common theme where women feel pressured to say and do what's expected of them. So, yeah, it's a, an important and interesting topic. Um, Victoria, could you tell us what is boudoir photography? So boudoir photography is a female portrait session when a woman is wearing lingerie or she's completely naked, uh, however, the way she feels most comfortable. And it's about showing her beautiful side, uh, accepting her own body in the moment and revealing some sides of herself that she didn't knew existed, which I want to describe as sensual and maybe the size that she wasn't ready to meet yet. So tell us, Victoria, what does a session, photography session like that look like? So a photography session like that, the boudoir photography, would mean that you need some kind of uh, preparation beforehand. And that is some kind of pre-planning. Uh, first of all, that is talking beforehand to me, either through emails, phone or social media, one of the channels. Second of all, I would choose the location for that. And that would be either a hotel room or a studio. And that would have some kind of mood set with the uh, lightning, some bed, like everything is important in the setting, right? And I would also set the music uh, that's fitting in the situation that is happening, right? Some, something more 
sensual, something more romantic, and I would talk to the lady. And this side of photography is a chance to show a woman her beautiful side, that she can feel comfortable in her body, and that she can have the most amazing portraits to remember, and that she would probably stop criticizing herself in the moment and just look back and rem remember how amazing she was back then. Wow, this, it just sounds absolutely brilliant. Um, Victoria, in North America, women have what's called glamour pictures taken. Do you know what I mean by that? Is this similar? They're, they're kind of, well, they're not naked, but it's all kind of very staged and, um, you know, lots of makeup and slightly artificial body positions, but this doesn't sound like that. It's different, right? Well, I have heard about this type of photography, the glamour photos that you have in North America, right? And I kind of feel that they're a bit more staged, uh, staged and then you can see that woman feels a little bit more uncomfortable. And um, in my photos, I try to portray them as real as, as possible. Of course, there are gonna be some kind of positioning or trying to fit a woman in some kind of pose, but it has to be natural. And the portrait itself is more real, it's better. Of course, when I'm directing a woman in a session, uh, in a pose, uh, I'm trying to be considerate and respectful because she might feel self-conscious and it's my job to feel her, uh, to make her feel more comfortable. I'm trying to put myself in her shoes, so to say, and trying to relate to the woman that is in um, this type of photo session. And of course, when it comes to boudoir photography, it has some sexual overtones, but, it, but I don't appeal to the man. I'm trying to appeal to the woman, to her own feels and needs, to her accepting every part of her own body. It, uh, when it comes to this type of photo session, it has to come from the woman herself, that she wants to do the session herself. She can't be pushed by someone or pressed by someone. And I mean, that can be a life partner or whatever. It has to come from the woman herself of wanting to do this type of session because as I mentioned, it's very, very personal and very open. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I'm sure it is. And um, when I think of this kind of photo session, as I mentioned, I think about myself as well because I was my own first model beforehand. And I'm thinking of what it can help and heal within yourself, right? Or rediscover within yourself. And that comes to some kind of parts of her, of a woman that she wants to connect to. And that is usually some parts that she was not able to do, uh, not able to connect to before. It comes to some kind of intimacy issues or just being accepted as a person she is as being accepted as the body she is. I'm loving the way that you describe this, Victoria. You, you make it sound almost like a yoga flow, um, very natural that way. Did you find it challenging to learn to work with different women? I, I know Yorin and I did as color analysts. In a short time, you have to meet so many personalities. But what you do is actually a little bit more exposed. Yes, that's true. And I'm trying to be as understanding as possible because that's my job. And I try to pick up on the emotion she's giving me. And as I said, um, you have to trust the person, right? That you're working with, uh, working with. She has to trust me and I has to have to trust her and I have to find the, this click that works both for us. And I'm trying to empathize with her. I'm trying to listen to all the concerns she might have about her body, of course. And if she's very, very critical towards that, I might tell her that, okay, we might not work. I will do my best, of course, but if, if the connection is not there, I will try and probably say that, okay, I want uh, to suggest you to another person, right? And it has, this connection has to be genu genuine <laughs> to work on both sides. And I want her to see my style as her style 
if mm -hmm. she is coming to me, then it means that she trusts my vision. Mm -hmm. Nice way to say it. Yeah. So the women, they come to you. And I, I just have a question. Is it their own idea mostly to come to you? Or <clears throat> are some of them doing it for like their boyfriend or husband? Whose idea is it usually? It definitely has to be their own idea. Uh, of course, that's perfectly normal if she wants to surprise her bo boyfriend or her significant other with these type of portraits, because I think that's uh, very beautiful and very intimate and not everyone gets to see them, right? Mm -hmm. But she can't be pressured into doing this. She has to want it from within, so to say. <laughs> mm. So Victoria, how did you get started? I, I believe I heard you say that you've been doing this for about a year. Uh, the boudoir photography, it's less than a year, but I've been doing photography for quite some time. It was since my teenage years. And um, basically I'm nature and travel photographer and also portrait and I'm doing brand photos, working with companies. But this year I decided I want to make my little dream come true and begin with the boudoir photography, which I was thinking about for a very long time. I didn't have the courage before and I didn't think I could show what I wanted to show uh, because I didn't believe in that topic for quite some time. It didn't come from me for quite some mm. time, but the idea was there. It was in the back of my head. Uh, Maybe I didn't feel good enough in my own body. Well, that's not a maybe, that's for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and what I wanted to portray is that women have such power within themselves, the feminine energy that can move mountains actually. But I wasn't convinced for myself for a very long time. And I thought that, how can I do that if I don't believe that myself, right? Hmm. And what happened was is that last year I got divorced and it was some kind of a moving point for me because I needed to prove to myself that I can do so many things mm. and doing the boudoir photography and empowering women mm. was one of those important transitions for me. And it, <laughs> I just, I just, I just did it. It's yeah. the very beginning. It's the very start, but I know that I want to continue with it and mm -hmm. it feels very important yeah. to me. I have every kind of respect for the fact that, you know, you, given the fear, not just of failing, but just general fear of, of showing up as something different. Um, you went ahead and did it. I, I, it's, it's hard, right. And, and now that you do it, it might not be so hard, but thinking about it, um, it, it is scary. And I guess as with time, you realize it never goes away. This You're always scared of something, but <laughs> your choices become live with it or stay where you are. And then that becomes the thing you can't live with anymore is just sitting there in this puddle of where you are. And, and it comes down to you and, and good for you that you, you moved forward. Mm. Yes, I agree. So it, it took a life event for you to follow your dream. And I think that's, that's something that happens to a lot of people. But um, what would you, no, not Christine, I want to ask Victoria, <laughs> what do you, what would you tell a younger self, knowing what you know now? I would tell my younger self and my present self, actually, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to, to start believing in myself more, mm. never giving up, trying not to lose myself in a relationship because I am a person outside of a relationship uh, and that I don't have to serve someone else in the sake of being liked or accepted. That's a struggle still, but I would tell that to my younger self for sure. We still have this thing in the society that as women, we are told one thing, uh, if we want to get successful or if we want to succeed, right? We have to get married. We have to have a family. We need to raise children, have children in order to be complete. And we have to take care of everyone else but ourselves. Mm -hmm. And education 
is considered as part of um, one of the necessities as well. Mm -hmm. And that if you're a working woman or you're owning your own business, you can't actually combine those two. Mm -hmm. I think that's not true. Mm -hmm. I think that you can have everything, but you can, you just need to have some sort of balance. Mm, Amen, sister. I admire too that Mm -hmm. you, you know, you're, I, I was 20 or 30 years older before I learned the things that you know, and I'm so grateful that you and we live in a world where we can say these things out loud, because you can't fix the problem if you just let it sit there hidden. I don't know if this is true, but I have this impression in some European cultures that, I I don't know how to say this, you care more what the neighbors think. In North America, I don't think we do that exactly. We sure have a version. And um, here, you know, it's all how the marketers get their hooks into us here. It has to do with status. This is this is how they divide us. Less perhaps the need for uh, a husband and the family to complete a woman. And this would be true in, in the 30 year olds and the 50 year olds too. Either way though, um, we end up apologizing for ourselves, right? You know, the woman says, I'm sorry, I didn't meet someone's expectations. Well, that is definitely true. We do have uh, the same thing in Lithuania where I grew up. Mm-hmm. And especially that happens with my parents' generation um, and my generation, which I can call millennials. And I think that's because we're carrying the trauma of my be- uh, of the generations from before. <laughs> yeah, we definitely have this feeling of being afraid of what others will say, of what they will think, of what I'm doing, of what I'm not doing. And actually, it's probably better just to do it because you probably going to be judged either way. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to see how Gen Z, the younger people, um, which I can, which I think I can uh, put my brother into uh, the age group. Uh, He's 22. And it's very very interesting to talk to him because I can see that he has a different kind of mindset, a different point of view. They are more focused. They're trying to realize that nobody really cares about what you're doing, right? You just have to do what you like to do. You have to do what you're called to do. And the thing is, it's just, as I said, people are gonna talk either way. So you might as well just do the thing, do your own thing. And what I want to do is just put something valuable out there without any um, comparison to others or being criticized or criticizing someone else Hmm. yes i hear you so moving right along what does boudoir photography have to do with body image i think boudoir photography has to do everything with body image because we're showing the body we are showing the body of a female in its very own beautiful form right and what I hear every time when a woman wants to do this type of shoot, the first words are, is when I lose some weight. <laughs> but the point is, is that you accept yourself no matter which stage or <laughs> what weight you're in, in that type of moment or in, your, in the period of life. You just accept yourself the way you are, no matter what. And you have to be confident with that you're kind of owning who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes when other people see the beauty in us, it becomes easier to see, or it's the first time we see it in ourselves. I um, had anorexia as a teenager and I had, and you know, as Victoria said, I still have never good enough ideas about um, achievement. What kind of achievement counted um, half maybe the environment around me, half it's just in my genetics, half a belief I constructed in my own mind. Maybe I was looking for self-worth. I mean, it gets all tangled up, right? But mm. um, I, my parents were of a generation where things were never spoken of. And these things stay part of us in adulthood. May I ask, what was your personal body image challenge, Victoria? Yes. 
as every woman, I have had all the struggles. I have had all the body issues, body image issues. And it's just incredible to see and think how it changed throughout the year, especially this year after the divorce, because I think I'm in much healthier place. Mm. I have been to the place where I have counted the calories, did the excessive training, weighed myself every day. And based on that number on the scales that I've seen, I decided that, okay, my day is ruined. Mm-hmm. Maybe my whole week is ruined. And- <laughs> My life is ruined. Yes, my life is ruined. Exactly. But that's not. And somehow it's all my fault. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) The the woman's anthem. Yes. Yes. Carry on, Victoria. Don't mind us. It's so (laughs) wrong to feel this way, but yet so normal to us Mm -hmm. because we have this societal pressure that we have to look one way and that's it to be successful, to be accepted, to just to be a woman, right? Mm -hmm. But as I mentioned, my body image or my acceptance within myself changed throughout the year. That is dependent on the, not only myself, but on the people uh, who are around me. Mm -hmm. You have to be very considerate what you have as your support group, as your friend group. Mm -hmm. So I actually have a very good friend of mine and because of her, uh, I stopped weighing myself every day. Yay! (laughs) I did it once a week, then I did it once a month and now it's once in, I don't know, two, three months Mm -hmm. and I feel that I'm much happier, much healthier because of that. Uh, I let myself eat more intuitively I let myself eat that piece of cake without thinking that I need to go and hike a mountain afterwards (laughs) (laughs) good 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 huge Um, progress I think that it's a huge progress and uh, everyone needs like especially women we need to find that kind of support group in our lives right Mm -hmm. do you agree with that (laughs) oh yes yes yeah very much so and and she let you, I think the other thing, and you, I'm sure you have this, she lets you heal in your way. She yeah, doesn't, definitely. Yeah, doesn't make you heal in her way, you know, or expect you to feel, she, let, she d- lets you discover who you are through this. Yeah. Yeah, it, I think that was the beauty of it because she, she was hearing all my, of course, complaints of, oh, I weighed this today or, oh, I look awful, oh, this and this and that. And she was just like, girl, you need to stop criticizing yourself so much Mm -hmm. because you're own best friend, no matter what. At some point, I figured kind of like Victoria, you just have to be released from all this. If someone has an issue with how I look, I I guess it's their issue. And I've also learned to be very thankful for a body that it just moves me on this earth and it lets me walk and it gives me opportunities. And who cares if I don't meet some impossible or artificial standard, if that's the trade-off I have to make, then I'll I'll stay the way I am. Um, You know, I I wonder too, I don't, Yara, and I don't know if you'd agree, and Victoria, that perhaps as a color analyst, women maybe need approval from others more than men do. We'd find her season, you are a, uh, whatever, a true autumn, whatever it may be. And we're all said, and she's seen herself and discovered and felt good, one comment on Facebook and the castle comes crumbling down. She's back Mm -hmm. to being confused and she's back to not being sure how to see herself. And and so it just takes time very much so and patience with ourselves. But sooner or later, as the song says, it does come down to you. You got to take a stand. Mm -hmm. You, You either have to decide, do I believe what the color analyst saw? Do I look at these photographs that you could show to anyone and say, this is a beautiful woman. If I didn't know the woman here, I would say this is a beautiful woman. And so, yeah, we take a, we have to take a stand, decide for ourselves. Mm. So yeah. yeah, well, this is this is why I'm not much on Facebook. So, um, <laughs> but I guess I'm kind of lucky because I feel in my life I'm very lucky. I feel loved no matter what I weigh. Um, 
for me though, my body issue is that I do admit that I'm struggling with accepting that as I age, things mm-hmm. sag, I, <laughs> my body shape changes and that, I, I, I can feel that, but I try to let not let it overwhelm me. I just kind of feel those feelings and then just kind of, okay, hello, friend. Yes, I look old. And then I just kind of shove them onto the sideline where, where they belong, but they're there. Um, and I can understand that it can be, if you let it, it can be quite debilitating. Mm-hmm. I, I do these YouTube videos and I saw, I'm looking at a lot more pictures, I suppose, although I'm looking at people all the time and I really see how mature women as very, very beautiful as young women are. Um, mature women, th- there's a strength to the beauty because we, we've been knocked down and gotten up a million times and you can see it in our faces, right? And so there's mm-hmm. this, the perfection of the beauty of youth, but it's, it's not as um, it's not strong, resilient, maybe like we got a toughness, you know, we wear our toughness, I suppose. And so, yeah, I agree. I noticed changes are coming with age too. Victoria, I think you mentioned this, but when you had the idea that you were going to move forward with the boudoir photography, the, the first idea wasn't really to em- empower women, right? It was to do, to follow your dream and then the empowerment of women that came after. Well, the idea was always there that women's bodies are beautiful and I find it as a force of life, right? Mm-hmm. And I know that we change a lot throughout the life. We go through puberty. We go through all these changes. Oh, and emotions are on top of everything. (laughs) Always. 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 And for me, what is so beautiful is that we give life, right? We do give life. Yes, we do. The best thing is body is done. Yeah, I agree on that. And what I want to portray is that this force, this empowerment, this belief, it has to come from within, right? I feel that we can just stand stronger because of it. So Victoria, you went from feeling not able to empower yourself or anybody to being a believer. And by photographing other women, well, boudoir or business photography, does it help empower you? Is that how you were able to change your own attitude? Uh, yes, I believe that I help myself by helping others. And I once heard a client said to me that this is my purpose. And I kind of felt it, that to make someone else comfortable it kind of goes back to me. I mm. feel more comfortable. Yeah, it's yeah. like a little circle of life. So divorce was the biggest push for me uh, in life uh, to go for this kind of business because of course I want to have boudoir photography as a business. And this is also a part of me that I need to accept, that I need to be okay with and that I need to empower myself kind of, that doing business as a woman is one of those things that you can actually do. And um, I was already a photographer, of course, before, and uh, I believe that creative process should be paid for. Uh, Therefore, I want this to be my business that can empower other women Mm -hmm. to believe that they can do it too. Absolutely. I mean, we would all do everything for free. And I agree with you in giving to others, you receive back so much, Um, but being paid to, well, it's what you said, part of women's empowerment. And it's also part of um, having me and others acknowledge the worth of what I do. It's a form of recognition and seeing that there is value in my creative ideas that other people can find as well. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a woman thing. We were as women, we are brought up to sacrifice and give endlessly, I think. And it, it takes gut to break out of that. 
And I think it comes more natural to men. Of course, a male photographer would charge for his work, you know. <laughs> but we as women were expected to do favors and we need to learn to be more assertive. It's kind of part of saying out loud that our work has value, that what I do is more than a hobby and that takes courage. Color analysis is also in a way empowering people and is sometimes a very emotional experience, especially when the woman has had issues with her looks and who hasn't, let's be honest. Okay. And by letting her show how wonderful she is, I feel for myself, I feel more free to allow myself to be just the way I am. It's back to that thing that Victoria said that you give and you get back. And Victoria empowers women by photographing them. And I empower women by finding their colors. We, we kind of both empower ourselves. Yeah, I, and, and me as well. It, it really feeds back. Victoria, you are very beautiful, as our listeners will know from your Instagram. I mean, in a way, you do fulfill the, the beauty ideal when come to think of it. Did you find it harder to, well, a beauty ideal, I shouldn't say all, but a, did you, that North Americans would relate to actually, did you find it harder to speak honestly about body image because you would be considered very beautiful anywhere. I mean, did you feel that people kind of dismissed it because of that? Do you think it's harder for beautiful women or was it for you? Uh, yes and no. That's, um, first of all, thank you, of course, for the compliment. I accept it. I'm learning to accept them Yes, we all are, <laughs> without, it, without explaining myself. <laughs> I give it sincerely. Yeah, you're very beautiful. Inside and, and out. The thing with beauty is usually you don't see yourself as others see you, right? Mm -hmm. Usually you're very critical about yourself. And the thing is, I didn't choose this body. I just got it. I just got this looks. This is not, this is not my essence. It's only a part of my essence, right? And just because someone is beautiful doesn't mean that they don't have issues. We all have issues. <laughs> everyone has them mm -hmm. and I just want to say that it's like even though you're beautiful maybe you don't see that yourself right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you have full right to feel one or another way to feel miserable to feel bad to have body image issues right mm -hmm. it it might even put a bigger pressure pressure on you that everyone sees you as beautiful and you're not allowed to feel in one or another way, but that's just wrong because you have feelings as human being, right? Mm -hmm. I just want to be accepted. You want to be accepted. Everyone want, else wants to be accepted as they are, as the essence that they are, not the body that they present, right? Beautiful. Yes. And my problems that I have, maybe they can just help someone else to solve theirs yeah it, you know it's I suppose in a way it, it, what you said it puts more pressure on you because it's yet one more set of expectations someone else's expect that you have to fulfill that you didn't really ask for I sometimes I have I'll, don't we all have trouble with the idea of accepting yourself or loving yourself they're not they're they're almost too easy as solutions for me it's too automatic like be authentic well, yeah, great, but how, you know, what's step one? How do I do this? And um, I'm not sure that I either accept myself or love myself. I think I accept myself. What Joran said, I got better at it by helping other people accept themselves, but I know I can accept and love others. Would you agree, Victoria, sometimes you feel you're not worthy of the connection or have I, have I gone too far? Oh, I always felt that way. Um, or feel the connection uh, I um I wonder if it's a media thing too you know these these oh, sound bites love yourself be happy be grateful I just don't always relate I mean sure we have to give and we want to be our best but well you don't have to be perfect to be loved and you don't have to achieve anything to be worthy and um 
I'll never maybe be happy or love myself in the soundbite way, but so what, you know, do I fail? No. What are my other options? And so what you do gives women away. So does color analysis. It, it's a way to achieve these lofty kinds of ideals, I think. Yoren, you have some books I know you've mentioned. Yes, I know. I know. I have two book recommendations that are tying into this theme. The first is by Anushka Rees. It's called Be Beyond Beautiful. Um, and it's about that women, they hit this wall of negative self-image and, and it offers a step-by-step -step walk through finding your way out of a negative body image. And I found it useful and I've recommended it to several. Have you, uh, I recommended it to you, Victoria. Did you start reading it? Yes, and I find it very helpful. I, I'm not reading it. I'm listening it uh, on. Oh audio. well, and I think it's one of the best ways to add on my self care regimen, so to say. Nice. Uh, but yes, I would uh, say that this recommendation is very good, and uh, it could be used by every. Yes. Not care. It it uh, should be used by every <laughs> woman out there. Nice. Yes, we we'll, we will put a link in the show notes. And the second book, which it's not about body image, it's a very different book. It's by Viktor Frankl. It's called Man's Search for Meaning. And he was in a concentration camp in uh, during World War II. And it's about his story. And he did survive and he went on to um, become a psychiatrist. And anyway, so his message is that the meaning of life is not fulfilling yourself it's being helpful to others so how you feel about yourself isn't important but what you can do for others matter it's it's a very i i love that book it's it's very meaningful to me a way of finding your path yeah yes i agree with this 100 percent. and i will be adding this book to my reading listening list and even today's podcast and our conversation was a part of helping each other out and this is what I want to do with all my heart. And I'm going to be a little dramatic on this, but as the quote goes, we rise by lifting others. Yeah, Victoria, <laughs> it's been an honor to have you here today. I, I, I know Joran and I have loved speaking with you. If, Victor, if uh, listeners want to, would like to contact you for photography, what would be the best way? Um, the invitation to contact is via email. Uh, which will be in the show notes or I'm often hired to go to places and do nature photography and business photography as well and this year I want to focus on sharing how I see the world around me and the categories that I work with mostly and fell into place are nature and travel uh, and that comes along with uh, working with brands and doing collaborations with them which I actually did with Jorun when I met her on a Tijar trip. <laughs> uh, I also do product photography and female boudoir photography as a separate niche. And you will get to see my work on the website, but it's just like a bit of a homepage right now where you can see all my contacts, like email or IG address and um, as, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the ladies will put it in the show notes. Yes, we will. And I want our listeners to know that I already booked a business portrait session for myself later this fall. So I'm so excited about that. Um, we loved speaking with you and hearing your story, Victoria. And I hope our listeners have enjoyed this episode as much as we've enjoyed having this conversation. So bye for now and tune in next month.